Today I will explain some of the concepts regarding inheritance that we haven't covered in class, but are present in homework four. Before we begin though, for the love of God, please do not use Remix. As we stressed multiple times in class, Remix is unfit for acting as anything more than a code playground. For production quality code, we need to make use of Visual Studio code. Also, please come to me or the course staff early if you run into issues with version control and synchronizing your code. Do not wait until the last minute to do so. As you can see here, we are given three interfaces. We can think of an interface as the scaffolding of a contract or a contract with only a general structure of how things should look like, but without any actual implementation. We are only allowed to define types such as structs, functions, and events inside an interface, not variables or even constructors. For the functions that we define in an interface, they must not have any implementation. In software engineering, interfaces are used for interoperability between black box software systems, meaning it is used to make two systems work with each other without requiring either system to fully understand how the other one works. A human using a computer, for example, is a prime example of using an interface. When the human moves their finger on the touchpad, they don't need to know how things work behind the scenes. All that matters is they are guaranteed the cursor will move in a certain way, and indeed it does. On the flip side, the computer doesn't need to know how a human finger works. All that matters is they know what to expect as the input. To inherit from an interface or a parent contract in general, we use the keyword is. This is quite straightforward and easy to understand at first glance, since it's very much plain English. When contract A is contract B or interface B, it means contract A inherits from contract B or interface B. At this moment, we're discussing interface inheritance exclusively. We will cover general contract inheritance in class next week. If contract A inherits from interface B, then contract A must implement all functions that are defined in interface B. If we fail to implement every single function present in interface B, then we end up with something called an abstract contract, which means a contract with an incomplete implementation and thus cannot be deployed. Uh, the contract that is being inherited from is called the parent contract, and the contract that inherits others is called the child contract. In general, we must add the keyword virtual to any function in the parent contract that we would like a child contract to re-implement. When we try to implement a virtual function, defined in a parent within the child contract, we need to copy the function definition from the parent and add the keyword override. Override means we are explicitly re-implementing an existing function defined and possibly implemented in a parent. A function can have both virtual and override keywords. Interface is a special case, however, since all functions defined in an interface are prohibited to possess any implementation, by definition, they must be overridden in a child contract to be useful. Therefore, it is not necessary to mark every single function as virtual in an interface. There are two more things I would like to mention. Firstly, events and structs defined in an interface are directly accessible in a child contract. Secondly, we can finally clarify the difference between internal and private visibilities. Internal variables and functions in a parent contract are accessible by child contracts while private ones are inaccessible by child contracts. Oh, and one last point, spending time to master your solidity skills really helps you ascend not only the competence hierarchy, but also the dominance hierarchy, even among engineering students. And good luck, lobsters, and get back to work.